Hi, I'm Peter Prevost, and welcome to this screencast for Chapter 2 of Data Science for Water Utilities. I've opened here the cloud version of RStudio. Uh, the first few actions are only applicable to the cloud version. In um, the desktop version, you have to do something slightly different. But here in, in the cloud version of RStudio, you click on New Project, and we are creating a project from a Git repository. Now, GitHub is a website where people can share code and, and little bits of data. So I'm typing this in, I'm pasting it, and you'll find this address on the website and also in the book. And you have to type it in there exactly. And when you hit OK, the cloud version of RStudio will deploy your project and copy the files from our GitHub repository to your cloud instance. If you have the desktop version, you will need to go to the GitHub website and download those files manually, unzip them, and then open the project file. For a few seconds, you will see the same screen as I got here. Wait for it. We're going to do some housekeeping. We're going to the tools and then the global options. And I will change the appearance slightly to make it easy for the screencast. So we go to 16 point letters and um, using a dark theme just to make the screencast a little bit easier. Right, so we can start. On the left-hand side, we have a greeting message that tells us that we are using R version 4.3.0. With a bit of additional information. And here, blinking away, we have the prompt. The greater than sign means that is that it is a prompt, that it's a place where you can type things. And this impatiently blinking cursor is just eagerly awaiting your input. This is where all the action happens. Then on the top right, we have the environment tab, where um, the results of our calculations will be visible. And then on the bottom right, we have the file browser, which we'll get to later. So let's start. The way R manages um, with information is by storing it into a variable. So we can create a var variable, for example, diameter. That name in. And then there's the assignment symbol operator for the R language, which is a lesser than sign and a minus. If I then type any value, let's say 150, hit enter. Now the value 150 is stored in the diameter variable. Now the, rate, the way to read this strange symbol is that 150 is pushed into, little arrow to the left, the variable diameter. You can type the equals sign in the R language like in many other programming languages. But as you get to more advanced uses, it is strongly advised that you use this operator uh, because it is more versatile than just an equal symbol. If I now type the word diameter, Enter, R then displays the value that's in memory in the console. Right. We can also do calculations with this uh, variable. For example, if I say pi divided by four, and you see as soon as I start typing parentheses, I'm getting the open and closed version times the diameter. And the other thing here is. After three characters, the R language will show you a little menu with options. And you can use the arrow key or continue typing uh, and then hit enter so you don't have to type the whole variable name. We divide it by a thousand to create meters and then square that and we get an area. But I might want to store that into a variable. Now the up arrow key and the down arrow key lets me scroll through the history of what I just typed. So if I type the up arrow key once, hit the home button, and then let's call this pipe underscore area assignment, bang. And now pipe area is stored in the environment up uh, top right, uh, and it has um, this value stored in memory. So now we can use that variable for future calculations. What's about variable names? Um, don't use simple variable name, variable names like D or A for area and D for diameter, 
because if you write long scripts, it will be confusing. Use meaningful names, and there are different ways of of writing these different uh, uh, different styles. I use uh, full words and then connect it with an underscore. Whatever you do, the way you write variables, just keep it consistent. Uh, I try not to use any capital letters, just to uh, to to avoid confusion about exactly how it's written. Because AST are being a, um, a Unix, originally a, a Unix type software, it is uh, case sensitive. So capital diameter with a capital D is not the same as diameter with a lower D. Now we can do arithmetic. Uh, and R is bot mass sensitive. So any of those silly memes that says that only a genius can solve certain um, equations that you see on Facebook or other um, social media, you don't have to be um, these because I will always give you the right answer. You can, there's a lot of stuff happening on the console and if I keep typing, um, also will just keep scrolling up and scrape scrolling up. It's like an old fashioned desk calculator with a little uh, printer on it so the, pa the paper keeps running. If you want to clear it all out, you press Ctrl L and then we have a clean slate. So now we've discussed scalar variables. The next level, which is a single value in a variable, we can also store a vector. So let's, for example, say that we have complaints. We measured them for a week and we had 12, 7, 23, 45, 9, 33 and 12 complaints for whatever reason, hit enter. And now we see that the complaints variable is created in the memory. It's a numerical vector with seven values. And here the other ones I've just typed. I cannot do calculations for this. I can say complaints uh, times two, if, if you really want to multiply your complaints by two, but there you go. Um, it now calculates those values over all seven elements of the vector instantaneously. You can also subset these vectors, so with square brackets, so complaints, square bracket, three, and then times that by two, we only get one number. Or I can also say complaints three to four with a semicolon, and then I get two values. This is a very important principle of vector arithmetic that will keep coming back, uh, because it's, a, it's one of the basic ways that the R language works. Let's look at some arithmetic functions that are a little bit more complex than basic arithmetic. Arithmetic. So we have non-revenue water, a new var variable. Non-revenue water is a collection, that's what the C stands for, of 13 and minus nine. 45 and zero. And this, and you see now that's uh, stored in memory again. And now I can do, for example, some uh, non revenue water. I only have to type N O N in tab. It's 49. Uh, I can do the product of non revenue water, which is zero. Then I can also take the logarithm of non-revenue water. Now that is interesting because we see two things here. Uh, we have an NAN, which means not a number. So the logarithm of a negative number is not a number. And the logarithm, the natural logarithm of zero um, tends to not negative infinity. So that's some, some output that I provide you here. Same with the square root. Um, we also get one error for the negative number. Oh, we can fix that by saying take the square root of the absolute value ABS of the non-revenue water, and then we fix that. So we can also nest functions like in any, any other language. Let's play this out. I can also do basic visualizations. So there's Diameter, let's call a new variable called diameters, because there's more than one. 
and we assign that from 50 to 351 millimeters. Then we can do the pipe areas and pipe our trusted um, again. Then as a vibe of thousand to the power of two. Then we get we see here. Let me drag this down a bit. We have 302 diameters, which range from 50 to all the way to 302. Uh, sorry, from one to well, 50 to 351. And there are 302 of those. And we also have 302 pipe areas that are associated. And I'll very easily, I can say plot. I want my diameters on the X axis. I want my pipe areas on the Y axis. And if I had enter, I get a little plot, but it doesn't look too pretty. Now, each function in the R language has a lot of parameters. So, for example, I can say type equals L, and now I just get a plain line. I can add a color, and I'll make it purple. And it shows me that purple actually looks like purple, and there we go. And there's a lot of other things that we can do to this plot. If you want to find out what is available in the plotting function, there's a trick, but if you hit the comma and then the tab function, you get some help. So main, for example, is the title for the plot. So you hit enter. Plot. There we go. There's a, and the other way to find this out, and this is very important, is how to find help. So question mark and plot. Want the default scatter plot function. Now we get a nicely formatted help file that gives a description of what that function means. Uh, some of the variables, uh, parameters that can be used, a description of all these parameters. So the R language is fully self documented with examples, et cetera, et cetera. Question mark plot, and that's a way to find help. Now we get to the case study. <clears throat> now, before I do the case study, I want to introduce a new concept. We've been typing here in the console, and all what well, everything we type just vanishes. And I can go with the up and down arrow. I can sort of repeat things, but it's all pretty ephemeral. So how do we store this? That happens in a script. And if you go to File, New File, and then R Script, and you see there's a lot of other options here, which we're not going to discuss. So you pick R script. You get an empty screen, and this is like, this is a text editor, it's like Notepad. So if I type in here, uh, diameter times two, hit enter, nothing happens because this is, we're writing a text here. So this is a recipe that we're going to write to do things. Now, if I hit control enter, that line is sent to the console and evaluate. So here that there's my 300. But I can also um, do our other formula again, divide by 1,000 to the power 2. Um, again, if I hit Enter, nothing happens. If I hit Control shift enter the whole script is evaluated. But to look at the little case study for channel flows, what we're going to do is file, open file, then the scripts folder, and there's an irrigation.r file. Open this, there is the channel case study. We'll go back to the environment here, and I'm clicking on the little broom to clear the environment so we have a nice clean slate. Clear my console. And all I need to do is hit control enter and evaluate line by line and see what happens. So we set the constants of CD, uh, gravity constant and the width of the channel. And then we have our questions. What I've done here, I've stored the first height, uh, 100 divided by 1000 to turn to meters in a variable H1. Then I create a variable Q1. And this is the Kinsfather Carter formula that's on the website and in the book. And bang, there is my answer stored in Q1. Uh, question two, the question was, what is the um, the average of uh, three variables? So we create a H2, 
which is the collection of these three observations. I divide all three of them by a thousand, run the same formula again, and then use the mean formula, which wasn't discussed yet, but it's a pretty obvious uh, common formula. And for plotting, we do the same thing. We can assign some H, uh, H3 here, calculate the Q3, uh, plot it, and also add some little lines on there and some points just to give you an idea of what can be done. There are other ways. So for question three, there's some other ways of doing this. The, the SEQ function, which uh, provides some more options of branding sequences. So in this case, from 0.05 to 0.3 by 0.0. 0, 0, 001, so that gives us the same H3 variable. Uh, length out is also a way, so we're creating a sequence from five centimeters to uh, 30 centimeters and divided by 100 observations. That's all, and then R will automatically calculate the steps. The other option is to do a for loop, but it's not recommended, so this is only for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm creating an empty vector here with the vector function. I is my steps, step one. H3, H3 goes from 50 to 500. We calculate the Q3, um, the ith version of Q3, increase I, and off we go. So if I run this, I also get an answer. So as you see, there are often, or almost always, more than one, one, one way to achieve the same result. So this is the end of the screencast for chapter two.